واتقوا الله الذي اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا جديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله اتقوا الله يا معشر المسلمين Fear Allah as you should be feared and do not die except in a state of surrender and submission to the will of Allah سبحانه وتعالى أما بعد Today's topic is our role models. Who do we emulate or imitate? Who are our idols? Who do we follow? But before that, I want you to ask yourselves a very important question. You know, each one of us here, at some time, inshallah, in this world, we will perish. We will be dead. We will be gone. Allah knows how long, how many years, how many days, how many hours, how many minutes left. But one day for certain, each one of us will be dead. But the question that you need to ask yourselves, how would you like to be remembered when you die? How would you like to be remembered? And what legacy are you going to leave behind? What legacy? Because in history, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, people who left beautiful legacy, khayr, righteousness, and those who left evil behind. Ila yawm al What camp will you be in? The camp of evil? Are you going to leave behind evil? Or are you going to leave behind khair, righteousness, praiseworthy? What are you going to leave behind? What will be the thing that people will remember you with? Or you will be those who were in the middle. Nobody mentions, nobody knows about them. They haven't left no khair, and they haven't left no evil. But they just happen to be there. Let us talk about youth who had vision in life. And we will start with the prophets. Let us start Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. As a young man, from the age of probably eight or seven, when his father used to ask him, go and sell the idols, Ibrahim alayhi salam would stand in the market and say, who, want, who wants things that cannot benefit them. He will put off the people. And then his brothers will sell the idols and Ibrahim will come back home. He didn't sell not, uh, none. And his father will beat him. Why didn't you sell the gods? Subhanallah. Ibrahim, as a young boy, sacrificed his body. He knew he would be beaten when he comes home, but he stood firm from the beginning. And when he grew up to the age of teenager, we know the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he told his people, Qala inni saqeem. I am not well, so that he would stay behind and destroy their idols. To make the point again, Yet Ibrahim knew his people will find out and the consequence of touching the idols was death. And we know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Ibrahim in the fire. قُلْنَا يَا نَارِ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ We said to the fire, be bird, cool, cold, not only cold, وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ and peaceful one. Because cold can kill you. Ibrahim sacrificed everything. 
He has sacrificed his life for La ilaha illallah. And the same Ibrahim alayhi salam went when he reached over 40. He is the same Ibrahim alayhi salam who is encountering again his people. He is encountering Namrud. And the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam moving from his land migrating for, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a barren land, Mecca, barren land, leaving his only son and his wife Hajar. And this is another woman whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has made her legacy, the hadith that we should act upon a way of life. No one would go to the, to the haram. No one would do tawaf or do any acts of imrah or hajj except that they have to do as safa wal marwa. This is her action. Allah made her action, action ibadah. Without that action, your hajj is incomplete and your umrah is incomplete. Why? Because of her sacrifice, standing by her husband, fi sabilillah, staying in a barren land, Allahu Akbar. These are the families who have sacrificed fi sabilillah. And that's their legacy. That's how we remember them up to date. Let us move on to another prophet. The, Ibrahim, the story of Ibrahim, we learn how to stand against oppressors. Be firm in front of tyrants, even if that means losing your life. Let us move on to different type of a story, Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf, we know his story as a young boy, he was thrown in the well. His brothers were trying to get rid of him out of their jealousy. He went through a lot. From that incident, he was sold to a king. And then he was a slave. A man whose fa his father is prophet. And the, his father's father is prophet, becomes a slave. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared something that he doesn't know. You see, brothers and sisters, whenever you are tested, be patient. Because you don't know what is behind that test. Be patient. And remember, no one chooses their own exam paper. No one chooses. Allah chooses for you. You just have to be patient. If Yusuf salam would remain in his household with his father, and he would not be thrown in the well or sold to slavery, he wouldn't be the king of Egypt the ruler of Egypt. But subhanallah, there is wisdom behind Allah's test. So be patient if you are tested. Yusuf is being tempted by the ruler of Egypt, the wife of the ruler. She calls him, she closes the doors and says, Hey Talak, come to me. What does she want? She wants zina. Adultery, fornication, evil act. And he says, I seek refuge in Allah from these things. He's a man, young man, subhanAllah. And also, he's not free. He's a slave. So when you are a slave, you have no say. They can do whatever they want with you. They could kill you, they would, you know, imprison you. No one is going to protect you. But Yusuf knew that Allah is his protector. And what is he giving up? He's given up his lust. This is very difficult. The first story about Ibrahim is being patient in the acts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obedience. Ibadah. 
And this is also the story of sorry, the story of Yusuf is being patient from lustful things. And that's most hard, Ibadah. It's very hard. To control your lust is very hard. To the extent that he, the woman calls her husband and tells him this is what he did. And the husband was just westernized, so westernized. He says, did you do that? No, 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 I, I didn't do that. Okay, he's lying. And he finds out she was lying and he says, you know, come on, don't do this again. Yeah. So westernized, yeah. SubhanAllah, no jealousy. Yeah. And he says, okay. Yusuf, don't do this again. But Yusuf was not happy about it. He went on, but the woman was still insisting to have intercourse with him. She called up the women of the ministers and she said, you, you lot were blaming me for have, trying to have an affair with this young man. And she brought him in front of them and he was, mashallah, so handsome. They started cutting their fingers subhanallah they were eating apples she gave them each one of them apple and a knife and then she said come out when he came out subhanallah they start looking at him and cutting themselves and they said wallahi we can't blame you go ahead subhanallah and she said now you're gonna do it with me or i'll throw you in jail in jail subhanallah most of today's people, don't throw me in jail. I will sleep with you, isn't it? May Allah save us from that. But Yusuf alayhi salam, what did, what did he say? Qala Rabb. Qala Rabb al-sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'unani ilayya. Oh Allah, prison is more beloved to me then what they calling me to? Zina. I don't want to commit zina. i rather be in jail. Subhanallah. That's the difference. Being patient. If you are tested with women and lustful things, look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. You have no excuse. If you are tested with tyrants, Look at the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Let us move on to the story of the boy and the king that we hear a lot. The boy and the king. That young man who has learned the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he started teaching the people, calling the people to la ilaha illallah. And the king hears about him. And he calls him and says, what are you doing? Is this the magic that you learn? No, it's not magic. This is Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Is there any other deity beside me? He, people used to worship him. He calls himself God. Deity that should be worshipped. And the boy says, not you. The one who created you. And he started punishing the boy, torturing him. Until he sends, when they could not get rid of him in front of uh, the king, he calls his guards and says, take this boy and throw him over the mountain, throw him. And they take him to throw the boy from the mountain. And the boy, putting his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he says, Allahumma makfini makfini bihim bima shit. Wa Allah protect me from them with whatever you wish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects him. Wa man yattaqi Allah yaj'al lahu makhraja. Whoever fears Allah, Allah makes a way for him, way out for him. Instead, they, the mountain shakes and they drop and the boy comes back. He could have run away. He could have run away. MashaAllah, I got one chance. Let me go somewhere else and start business. Run my life. Get married. Settle. No, this boy has vision. He comes back to the king. He says, how? 
What happened to the gods? He says, Allah has protected me from them. He sends one other group and he says, okay, throw him in the middle of the ocean. The boat capsizes, they go down and he comes back. Allahu Akbar. Same dua. The boy comes back to the king and he says, what happened to the gods? Allah has protected me from them. That boy could have run away. He's only 16, 17, 18. He could have run away. Look after his affairs, his life. Why die in this? But subhanallah, no. He has a vision. He tells the king, if you really want to kill me, gather the people of this city and call out, tie me on that tree and call out and give you my spear. I'll give you my arrow, my bow and arrow. Say, Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam. Say, in the name of Allah. Bismillah. In the name of Allah. Rabbil Ghulam. The Lord of this boy. What is he trying to do? Because his people used to worship this man, the king. And he wants to tell the people, this is not deity to worship. He can't harm anything. He can't do anything without saying la ilaha illallah. You only die when Allah has decreed for you. And the king is trying to kill the boy by not listening the advice. He throws the first arrow, nothing happens. And the boy calls out to him and says, you know, I told you, if you don't say what I told you, you can never kill me. Subhanallah, confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the king calls out and he says, Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam, and he kills the boy. Allahu Akbar. And the people start screaming, La ilaha illallah. لا إله إلا الله آمنا برب الغلام. We believe in the Lord of this king. We believe in the 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 Lord of this boy. الله أكبر. Allah mentioned the story in سورة البروج. أصحاب البروج. What did he do this tyrant when the boy sacrificed himself for لا إله إلا الله? He accepted death for this. He gathered the people and he said, if you don't go back from your belief, I will ban you, I'll ban you to death. Like what we see nowadays in Burma. Burma. The Muslims in Burma are being burned to death. Beaten and burned to death, or lie, by the Buddhist. Peaceful people, they call themselves peace, the Buddhists. No longer peaceful now, they're killing. He gathers his people one by one and he throws, throws them in the fire until he reaches to a woman, subhanallah, a woman. Sisters, listen up. A woman, Allah. She throws her children one after another until she is remained with one in her forearm. She's carrying the little one. She's holding. Now she is hesitant. She fears. I can't throw my little one. And they say, you throw him in. Throw him in. She says, I can't. She's hesitant. She wants to go back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because she sacrificed her other three children, Allah has firmed her heart. And Allah made that boy speak in cradle, that little one. That's the second child or baby who spoke. After Isa alayhi salam, you know Jesus, he spoke in cradle, and this little also spoke in cradle, in support of his mother, subhanallah. Why? In She has been firm in the deen of Allah, she supported the deen of Allah, she sacrificed the most expensive thing in her life, her children. Allahu Akbar. 
and Allah has made her firm. The little one is broke. Oh mother, you are on the true path. Throw me. We'll meet in Jannah. And that's what he says. She throws him in. And she was thrown after him. All of them killed, burned to death because of La ilaha illallah. What happened to us, me and you? What have we suffered for this deen? Tell me. Little worry, we are ready to give up our deen. Little worry, little fear. Subhanallah. These people were burned alive, subhanallah. And they were steadfast in their deen. They didn't change. وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا They did not change. رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا عَاهَدُوا اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ رِجَال Among us the believers, male and female, who stood firm, fulfilling the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they did not change. أَصْحَابِ الْأُخْدُودِ Maybe, in today's people, we will look at them and say, Subhanallah, look at these people. They lost their lives, isn't it? They're, they lost their lives. What's the point? They could have said something, you know, to make this tyrant leave them. Just say, utter the kufr, and they could live their lives. But these people understood. Whether you accept death now or tomorrow, death is going to come. What is the best way then? The best way is when you're sacrificing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they realized remaining in this dunya with humility and oppression and accepting tyrant abusing you, you better be dead. Subhanallah. Allah called their action. What did he call? ذلك الفوزل كبير. That's the greatest success. Imagine success. For us, they perished. You know? They didn't care of their lives. Subhanallah. But that is the greatest success in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these people we are mentioning today, Allah is telling us they are your food, they are your role models. Otherwise, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you about their stories? Tell me. That young man, if you are a young man, you have no excuse. Be firm in your deen. If you are a woman, don't say, you know what, I'm a woman. By the way, the first woman, the first martyr in Islam, we're talking about at the era of Rasulullah wasallam. but there are many Muslim women who sacrificed, like the one we talked about now. Like the Asiya, Asiya the wife of Fir'aun. She was patient. She was tortured to death. She did not change her deen. The first Muslimah who was killed, it was in Mecca by Abu Jahl, alayhi la'ahinullah. May Allah curse him and the likes of him. She was killed being firm in la ilaha illallah, Sumayyah. First woman, that family offered their life, everything they got. The father died, he was tortured to death. The mother, Sumayya, was tortured to death, and their son, Amman. And Rasulullah would pass by them and say, Sabran ya ala yasir, fa inna mawidukum al jannah. Be patient, the family of Yasir. Your promise is Jannah. You will meet one another in Jannah. Rasulullah he did not offer dunya. He never promised dunya, this world. So is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah never promised dunya because dunya is dani, something low. Allah has written the risk for the mu'min and the kafir in this dunya. But Allah promises Jannah. Dunya, your share, you will get it, don't worry. Muslim and a kafir, everybody will get their share until they die, until they are dead. 
Subhanallah. So don't worry about dunya. Worry about your akhirah. Worry about your akhirah. Now that we mention a few examples of steadfastness and firmness in the deen, I want you to ask yourselves a few questions now. In order to achieve legacy and leave behind legacy like these people and follow their footsteps, we need to ask ourselves a few questions. Number one, why were you created? What is, your, what is the purpose of your life? Why are you here in this world? Are you here just to be born from a mother and father, grow up, go to school, university, get married, job, children, grandchildren, and die? Is that, do you think that is your purpose? Think again. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْشَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create jinn and man except for my worship, for my obedience. You have to be living according to Allah's will in His universe. Subhanallah. We have to answer that. And you have to fulfill the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين. Say, my salah, my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and dying is for Allah alone, without any partner. Subhanallah. Fulfill your covenant. Know why you here. The second question that you need to ask: Who do you worship? Who do, we, who do we worship? Allah, of course, all of us will say we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But double check. Your ilah, your God, ilah, the thing that you worship, is the one who you would sacrifice, the one who you fear most, the one who you love most. Who is that? Who would you do everything? Who would you sacrifice everything? Is it money? Is it woman? Is it man? Is it children? Is it football? What is it? What would you sacrifice for? What would you die for? Who, who you would die for? Who would you, you know, subhanallah, get angry for? Who you fear most? Is it Allah or someone else? Who do you love most? Is it Allah or someone else? Because Allah would not accept love with him. You cannot love someone with Allah. You can love someone for Allah. But you can't love with Allah. You have to love Allah. His messenger. And he's striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything in this world. If you're not... Double check yourself. Otherwise, you can't leave no legacy behind. You can't leave nothing. Number three, what have you done for this deen? What have you done for this deen? Oh Allah, I pray. I used to pray, I used to fast. That's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must do that. There's no question about it. But what have you done? What are you going to leave behind? What legacy are you going to leave behind? A child that you educated toward his deen, who would make dua for you, and then raise the banner of La ilaha illallah? A child who would stand up for this deen and call the people to La ilaha illallah? If you are a father. Or what do you yourself do for this deen? What have you done so far? This is a question that we need to ask ourselves in order to achieve what the people previous achieved. Our legacy remaining in this world and history will talk about you. History will talk about this generation like history talked about the generation before us. 
What have you done for this deen? Was this deen honored in our time or humiliated? This is something that would history would talk about us. The young generation, they would either curse us and say, Subhanallah, these were the ones who sold out the deen. Or they will say they're the one who stood up for the deen. What have you done for this deen? Ask yourselves. Number four. Who is your friend? Who is your friend? Al-Mar'u ala deeni khalili. The person is upon the deen of whom he friending. Who is your friend? Ask yourselves. Your friend, is it the one who's going to remind you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or is the one who's going to call you to other than that? Your friend is either your Jannah or Hellfire. وَيَوْمَ يَعُبُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَدْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يا ليتني يا ويلتا ليتني لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد أضلني بعد إذ جاء لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا. Listen to this example Allah talking about a ظالم a wrongdoer someone who has taken bad friends bad company. What would he say يوم القيامة? He would buy to his hands out of regret. And he would say, I wish I have taken Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as an example and role model. I wish, but that wish won't help. Yawm al qiyamah, it's too late. Ya waylata, he's gonna curse the day he has befriended that person. Ya waylata, woe to me. ليتني لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا Woe to me I wish I wouldn't have taken that person as friend Close intimate MashaAllah, friends of today What's the points? Cricket Yeah Goals MashaAllah We send in texts non-stop Or Facebook We won the game We, who are you? You represent them, subhanallah. We, you hear this word a lot. Oh, we beat you. We won the game. What is that going to do for you? Leave that does not benefit you, wallah al -adim. A zuhd. Abstaining from good things. We're talking about from good things. Not indulging too much in good things. Zuhd. They say that zuhd. It is the leaving the thing that would not benefit you for your qiyam. Tell me, what does football benefit you? Does it help you in your grade? Cricket and loving their people. That's what I said before. Who's your God? Who do you really worship? Or some people, they will tell you, I can't leave this, man. Uh, yeah, this, uh, that's your God. Anything that you, uh, you can't leave, subhanAllah, you have to watch. If you can't watch, what is going to happen? You're going to die? No, I have to watch the game. I have to. Leave that does not concern you. Leave that would not benefit you in your grave in Yom Al Qiyamah. And don't be that person who would regret and say, I wish I would have taken Rasulullah as an example, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you would curse Shaitan that day. But you are his follower. You are with him. He will give you that khutbah, the final khutbah ceremony. All of you in hellfire. Subhanallah. Who's your friend? Will your friend remind you about Allah? Imagine death comes to one of us while sitting with their friends. What do you think? These friends, can they remind you about Allah? Can they tell you, please, brother, say la ilaha illallah? Would they remind you? Or they will keep saying, what? What happened to the man? What? Nonsense talking. And Audhu Billah, some of them even cursing, F word and all this, because they're used to these things. Automatically it happens, comes. 
Subhanallah, who's your friend? Number five. Are you proud with your identity? As a Muslim, are you, are you proud to be a Muslim? Subhanallah. Many people are not. They don't want people associating them with Islam. Some of them even change their names. They call me Mo. It's not Muhammad anymore. Mo. Rashid. Call me Richard. Rashid. I don't want to be called Rashid. A'udhu Billah. People are running away from their identity. From their Islam. Listen to the story of those who were proud of their identity. The story of Rabi ibn Amr, radiallahu ta'ala He went to negotiate with the Persian leader, Rostum. Rostum, he was so proud man and arrogant. And he said, what brought you to us, O oh Arabs? You shepherds, why are you here? What do you want? If you want life, we'll give you a few golds. Go back. But these people were not those Arabs anymore. They were worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were not worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were not worshipping money or wealth or children or gold, material. No, they were worshipping Allah. And they had vision and they were proud of their Islam. What did he say? How did he reply to that? He said, We are people whom Allah raised for humanity. We were raised for humanity. As Allah praised this Ummah, Kuntum Khaira Ummah, you were the best of the nations who were raised for humanity. What is, that, what is the purpose? What is their job title? Ya'muruna bil ma'roof. They enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil and they believe in Allah. They don't do that for dunya's sake. They don't, they don't do that because it's my job. Because you see, people do Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi an al munkar in a different level. A policeman, for instance. Why he does what he does? Because it's his job, yes? I get paid to do this. But a mu'min, it's not like that. He doesn't want reward from anyone except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rabbi ibn Amir, he stands firm. And he tells that tyrant, we were raised to free humanity from the shackles of oppression, oppressor, or oppressing one another, or worshipping one another. Because people were actually worshipping, like today, they worship one another. People worship one another. You see, the person you worship is the one who makes haram and halal for you. If you follow him, you worship anyone who legislates for you. No, haram, halal, and you follow him, you say, he is my lawmaker. That's it. That person is your God. You follow him. Subhanallah. So these people were following tyrants, bowing down to tyrants. They would make halal and haram for you and they follow them. He said, we came to free the people from the shackles of oppression. Subhanallah. Nahnu qawmun abta'athana Allahu min ibadah, nukhrija al-ibadah min ibadah al-ibadah ila ibadah rabbi al-ibadah. To free humanity from worshiping one another to the worship of one creator, Allah. That's why we're here. And from the narrowness of this dunya to the vastness of dunya and akhirah. From the narrowness of this world, it's narrow, it's filthy. It vanishes, it fades away, wallahi al-adim. 
fades away. Where is yesterday, brothers? Where is yesterday? It is gone. It will never come back. So, from the vastness of this world and here after, when you worship Allah alone, that's what you get. You're not oppressed, you're a free person. Allah created you free. You are only the slave of Allah, not a slave of anyone else. That's what Islam wants you to be. Worship only Allah, not beside Allah, too many gods. A'udhu Billah. May Allah save us from that. And number three, he says, and from the oppression of other religion to the justice of Islam. Because other religion, they oppress too many dhulm, too many wrongdoing. And we see that a lot. Look at the Christianity, for instance. The Catholic, the, what's his name? The Pope, just sitting in that throne, collecting gold. Too many gold. And they told, last time when he was anointed or appointed, he talked about poverty in the world. And he's got that crown of gold. Poverty. If Isa was around, Ali salam, if they follow in Isa as they claim, or they love Isa, they worship Isa, Isa would be giving the wealth to the weak, zakah to the weak, and he would not collect money and sit on gold and wear gold. Subhanallah. So other religions, from the oppression of other religions to the justice of Islam, other religions do oppression to the people. Yes. Islam frees people from that. This is what he called to Rostum and his people. And the last point, number six, are you happy your relationship with Allah? Are you happy? Do you have good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you think? If you were to weigh your good deeds and bad deeds, which one of them will be outweighing the other, do you think? The good or the bad? From today, just now, think about it. How are you going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If Malik al Mawd was to enter today, while we sit here, and take one of us, are we ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this moment? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? These are questions that we need to answer. Before we achieve, before we leave any legacy behind, because you cannot let, leave any legacy behind, and people will not remember you in any good way, without answering these six questions to yourself. Answer these six questions and know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين اللهم وفقنا إلى ما فيه الخير والرشاد اللهم بارك لنا في شعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بارك لنا في شعبان وبلغنا رمضان ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين
التحويل التحويل اوكي okay. so was that something I talked about تحويل تحويلة you find that in the Quran yeah تحويل is sending something or حوالة yeah moving something from place to another yeah تحويلة yeah If any sheikh or any maulana is doing bid'ah and he's uh, he's spoiling the deen of Allah, uh, should we expose him or should it, we beat him up or we should kick him out? <laughs> what is the best? Because Islam said three ways, hand, toe, heart. What is the best way in UK? Not in Pakistan, no, not in India. Here, what do you wish to do? We go to council? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, mashallah, that's uh, quite a good question, I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, to, f to change any uh, evil, first of all, we have to know if there will be more evil. From changing that evil, then we don't change altogether, number one. Number two, we have to tell, we don't take actions like this, we have to tell people of knowledge about that person. And they have to encounter, they have to sit with him and find out really what's happening. Not the lay people can't decide whether this is bad or good. We don't know what is behind his actions. We don't know. So the people of knowledge will investigate and find out. They, they're the only one who could deem and say, yes, this person is bidding or not bidding. Yeah? So we don't uh, uh, straight away label. Uh, we have to be very careful of labeling. So, we leave that to the people of knowledge. فَسْأَلُوا أَنَ الْذِكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And this is issue of qada also. You have to have a, a, a you know, qadi who would deem someone, subhanAllah, to be bid'i or, or, or disbelieve or whatever. So we don't take these things lightly and we don't beat them up, of course. You know? So that would bring more, more uh, problem. We don't want to create more evil, yeah? To change an evil. Uh, thank you for Allah, that's my answer, inshallah. Maybe the Sheikh will answer you better, inshallah. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we're going to move on, inshallah, to the next lecture, which is um, the importance of giving power. And inshallah, Sheikh Fahad is going to um, give us a session, inshallah.